honor you and we bow to you and submit to you tonight as Lord and as Savior and as our Redeemer and our response to you is hallelujah. God, we owe you tonight the greatest. We owe you tonight uh, the most profound. We owe you tonight the highest praise. Because you are the one that came and went to the cross for us and died, shed your blood, was buried, and is now risen, seated at the right hand of God. And Lord, tonight we owe you the glory. God, have your way tonight in this place. It's in your word, with power, with demonstration, give us understanding. Not just, God, the things that you do. God, give us understanding of who you are in us and who you desire to be, God, through us. Cause us to know that we are your representatives. And we're those, God, that are assigned with the responsibility of representing you here in the earth. We are witnesses for you. We're those that have been called to declare your name everywhere. That, God, you allow our foot to try. You declare that the footsteps of the righteous are coordinated, orchestrated by God. Lead us, God. We'll submit to you. We'll say to you, God, with our whole hearts, have your way. Do what you will in us. God, we're mere clay in the hands of the potter. Work with us, mold us, make us again tonight another vessel. Do it because you're God and we give you glory. And we declare by faith, Lord, it's already done. We celebrate you for it in Jesus' name. Every believer say, thank God. Amen. Amen. We honor the Lord tonight. Thank God for the spirit of the Lord in this place. Our response tonight is hallelujah. We glorify the name of the Lord and we declare his name to be worthy. His name is high and lifted up. And his name is worthy to be praised. We celebrate him uh, tonight. And I want to encourage you to turn with me, if you would, to the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 11. Uh, and if you would, I want to read uh, verse <coughs> number uh, 23, just the one verse. I could read the passage, but uh, let's just read that one verse, First uh, Corinthians 11, verse 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. You may be seated. I want to encourage uh, you tonight from the theme that Jesus is our communion. He is our communion. Jesus is our communion. He is uh, our sacrifice. He is uh, our uh, propitiation. Uh, he's the one that died the substitutionary death for us. And tonight we owe him the glory for his faithfulness toward us. Uh, when the Bible talks about communion, it actually utilizes the Greek word uh, that's called uh, Eucharisteo, Eucharisteo, or the Eucharist. Uh, many of you know it's not just a word that's used, uh, perhaps, as some of you may know, in the Catholic Church, but it is, in fact, a Greek word, a Eucharist, which means the same thing as communion. He is our communion. He's the Eucharist. Uh, the objective is just simply to reevaluate. Uh, you know, uh, what we know and what we feel, what we think about uh, Eucharist or communion or uh, the pleasure that we know to have actually uh, been received, uh, you know, by individuals that have been the partakers of communion. And remember what Jesus did for us always at Calvary. We are on the eve of our first Sunday where we uh, you know, normally or customarily receive communion. Uh, and many of you are uh, sitting with anticipation of uh, experiencing and enjoying this tremendous uh, blessing as you uh, enjoy service in person, those that are serving, that are worshiping at home. Uh, we know that many of you have the elements there that 
uh, you can use to partake in communion. So I want to just encourage you from this theme tonight. What I want you to know is that Jesus uh, is literally the Eucharist. He is literally the communion. And you got to know that he is present at, <coughs> at the very moment uh, you receive communion and wants us to know uh, that it is, in fact, the privilege that we have uh, in all of our lives, uh, the time to usher remembrance of him uh, in our lives, regardless to what we may be facing at any given moment or in the midst of any particular or any given experience that we find ourselves in. We do this by partaking in the blood and body uh, of Christ and remind ourselves that Christ is always here. He uh, reminds us through communion. That's why the Lord said, uh, as often as you come together, uh, you have the privilege of being reminded that I'm there with you. He said that you can do this by receiving <coughs> uh, communion, uh, by receiving the blood and the body of Christ, that we are reminded of the presence of Christ. The Lord said in Hebrews 13, verse 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. One of the challenges that individuals often experience in life, particularly as we're endeavoring to serve God, is forgetting about the fact that the Lord is always here. I wonder if an individual would ever consider suicide if they were, in fact, profoundly <coughs> in remembrance or walking in clear understanding that Jesus is always with us. What I want you to do is just consider the fact that the church in many ways uh, has lost the conviction that there is always uh, the presence of the Lord in our midst. And, and, and what we do as a result of that, uh, as a consequence of that, experiences uh, you know, come in our lives that, that often are accompanied by unimaginable frustrations anxiety and stress. We forget that the Lord is with us. We forget that if he's with us, all that he is, is with us as well. It eradicates uh, the, the, the struggle. It eradicates uh, the, the, the misery, the pain, the, the discouragement, the destitution, the dereliction, uh, even uh, the, the, the dishonor that we show him uh, or desire uh, because of the fact that for the moment we've forgotten that the Lord is with us. If we remember he's with us, then I will submit to you that you could rid yourselves of loneliness. If you remembered he's with you, you could even perhaps rid yourself of gross discouragement. If you remember that he's with you, you can rid yourself of fear, of rejection, rid yourself uh, of not only rejection, but rid yourself of uh, even defeat. You can rid yourself of oppression, rid yourself of doubt, rid yourself and eliminate uh, hopelessness because he who is the, uh, listen, the pinnacle of our hope is right with us because of the failure to recognize that the Eucharist or the communion uh, is here. It lets us know that the God of the Bible is always, listen, endeavoring to remind us of the fact that he is here. As a matter of fact, I, I shared just last evening uh, from the theme, Emmanuel, the Lord or God is with us. He wants us to know. Listen, knowing that God's with you, uh, I want you to know it's a game changer. Uh, if you know that God's with you, it, 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 it makes the, the playing field, listen, uh, uh, appear, uh, you know, uh, of course, correctly, uh, in favor of the believer, in favor of the saints. And it, it grossly, <coughs> listen, places uh, this in the, uh, the, the edge or uh, the, the benefit in favor of the believer over the, the devil himself. You got to know that it is a, a powerful thing when we receive communion. Because think about this, if you receive communion and you are receiving it during a time when your body is afflicted, you're reminding yourself right then and there that Jehovah Rapha is present, the healer. Amen. If you receive a communion and you are experiencing a financial destitution, you remind yourself that Jireh is here, that your provision is present. 
no matter what your circumstance, if you're in the midst of a tremendous battle in your life, wherever the battlefield is, whether it's in the area of relationship, whether it's in the area of, <coughs> listen, uh, of your job assignment, in the area of children, uh, listen, being, uh, you know, uh, listless and running, <coughs> uh, listen, uh, loose uh, in the earth, and you are not con uh, it's clear whether or not they are yours or whether they are the sons and daughters of Chucky, you don't know. But listen, you have to know that the Lord is here, that he is always here. And that's what <coughs> receiving communion reminds us. Not just the fact that God is here, but when we know who he is and know that when he's present, that all that he is is present as well. His peace is there. His joy is there. His strength is there. His wisdom is there. His, listen, persistence is there. His ability to hold us, his ability to keep us is there as well. Communion, listen, reminds us. And it lets us know that the God of the Bible is always there. You are simply never alone. Uh, communion is not just a wafer and wine uh -huh, or just a cup and a cracker. It is, in fact, a reminder that God is with us. It is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. He is our bread and he is the Eucharist. And yes, he is our communion. We've got, uh, listen to know, that in the word of God, Paul uh, uh, writes to the church uh, in Corinth demonstrating some obvious frustration over what he's been hearing and seeing in the saints at the church regarding the receiving of communion in the life of the church. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 17 through 22, he says, now, uh, in this that I declare unto you, Paul says, I don't have much praise to give to you right now. That you come together not for the better, but you come together for the worse. Uh, listen, for the first of all, he says, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. And he says, because I know y'all, I partly believe it. He says, for there must be also heresies among you, folk gossiping, folk creating stuff where there is no stuff. He says that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. One is hungry and another is drunken. What, Paul says, have you not houses to eat and to drink in or despise ye the church of God and shame them that do not have. What shall I say to you then? Shall I praise you in this? Paul said, I don't think so. He said, I praise you not. In this passage, it's clearly uh, the exemplary of the disappointment in the heart of Paul. Disappointed in the saints. And he tell them that I don't uh, have any praise for you, listen, church, at this precise moment. He even goes as far as to, uh, listen, include a, a word Listen, sinners with a question mark. He says, one word sinners, he says what? What in the world is going on here? This accentuates the concern that Paul has about the current behavior, and he makes no mistake about the uh, expression of his concern over their lack of understanding about communion. He further states uh, in verse 29, in verse 11, he says, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, this is where he closes the argument and tells them that if they eat and drink unworthily, it says, listen, then they continue the death sentence upon themselves, and this is happening due to the fact that they are not discerning the Lord's body. He says you continue the death sentence among yourselves because you are not discerning the Lord's body. He says you continue the death sentence upon yourselves because you are not discerning the Lord's body. He's telling them that some are full and others are already drunk. If not literally then drunk in their appetite or their delusion or passion for things that God has not ordained versus focused upon the things that he really wants us to pursue. So we misunderstand, watch this, that this is not just bread or drink. 
or just food, but rather it is, in fact, the body of Christ. Communion is the body of Christ. You should go home. It says, listen, only if you want physical food. He said, if you want just physical food, don't hang around here for communion. This is not physical food. This is the blood. This is the body of Christ. We are ingesting, listen, the blood, the body of the Lord. We are receiving him, amen, and saying we need spiritual, amen. His body, his blood represents spiritual for us now, amen. It's certainly not physical. The physical wafer uh, and the, listen to the juice, but it is in fact a symbol of the spiritual presence of the Lord that we're bringing into our lives. We didn't come here to satisfy an appetite with a, a wafer, uh, listen, and uh, listen, a water or a wine, but we came here to, listen, experience the presence of the Lord spiritually so that we can, listen, deal with the challenges that life presents to us. Uh, always in our lives. That's the thing that God says that he wants us to know. He says, go home if you only want physical stuff uh -huh, and bodily sustenance, but we come together in these instances to partake of the body and the blood of our Lord, listen, and to be reminded that he is present at that very moment. We're told in John chapter 6, verse 48, it says, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and they're dead now. Manna didn't keep them. Manna sustained their physical body, but it did nothing for the spiritual body. He says they're dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. He says whenever you ingest the spiritual presence of God and the, uh, the understanding of, listen, spiritually of the presence of God in your life. It says you will live, listen, for eternity. He says, I am the living bread which cometh down from heaven. If a man eat of this bread, if you receive, listen, him as the sacrifice, the Eucharist, as you receive, listen, him as the one that died for your sin, he said, listen, you will live forever, and the bread that I will give, he says, is my flesh. He's saying the sustenance I have for you, it says the, the nourishment, the nutrition, spiritual that I have for you, is, listen, it's the sacrifice that I wrought for you at Calvary. It's the fact that I died for you on the cross, and I'm the one, listen, that came down from heaven to become, listen, the the propitiation for your sin, the substitution for your sin, and I died on the cross just for you, is what the Lord is declaring in this text. He says in this particular pericope, he says, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Uh -huh. Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh, of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Uh-huh. He says, whoso eateth my flesh and, uh, listen, and my blood is drink indeed, he says. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I dwell in him as the living Father has sent me. And I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me, the Lord says. He said, this is that bread which come down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He says, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever, is what the Lord said. You know what he's talking about. He's talking about, listen, receiving, listen, him as our substitutionary, uh, listen, sacrifice. We should have been the ones that died, but Christ died in our stead. He says, so when you receive me, you're reminded, listen, always of the work that I wrought for your life at Calvary. Uh -huh. we, we receive him as the Lord, as the Savior of our life. Listen, remembering the blood and the body that was sacrificed in our behalf. And so receiving it, we're saying to God, had it not been for the work that you did for us at Calvary, we'd all be lost right here tonight. He's declaring us. He said, remember the word discern. 
It means, number one, to detect with the eyes, discern, listen, a figure approaching uh, through fog as an example. Listen, discern, it means to detect with the senses other than vision is what he's saying. Detect with the eyes is to discern. Listen, as things come into focus, I wanted to come into focus tonight, the fact that the Lord is your communion. The Lord is your Eucharist. The Lord is your sacrifice. Listen, for your sin. Uh huh. He says, listen, discern means to detect with senses other than your sight. That means that there is, listen, the, the, the presence of the Lord in you. And God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, is giving you understanding, listen, of what the word is declaring concerning who the Lord is in your life and who he desired to be as your Lord and as your Savior. Uh huh. Discern means to recognize or identify as separate and distinct, or it says to discriminate in discerning or determining the difference between what's right and what's wrong. He says don't come to communion uh -huh, with, listen, just a big physical appetite, but you ought to come to communion with a spiritual, uh, listen, heightened sensitivity to remind yourselves that the God who is our Savior, the God who is our Deliverer, the God who is our Keeper, the God who is our Waymaker, the God who is, listen, our provision, the God who is our, listen, uh, our, our healer, the God who is, listen, our peace, the God who is our victory, the God who is our salvation. That God is with us right here, right now. As we partake of this communion, as we partake of this Eucharist, we're reminded that everything that we need is present right here. That means, listen, discern means to come to know or recognize mentally. Uh-huh. Listen, what God, listen, is in our lives. He's saying the desire of God in these verses is to get us to see and detect the difference and to recognize and identify as separate and distinct from mere bread and drink. But it is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. His desire is to get us to see, to detect, and listen, to, uh, to ascertain the difference between this and identifying as separate and distinct the Lord is from mere bread and drink because the Eucharist, the communion, is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't miss the fact that we've got to discern and detect. We've got to identify this as the body and the blood of our Lord. Don't miss the fact that the Lord said you must discern and you must detect and identify. This and this Eucharist as the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't miss the fact that you've got to discern, which means you've got to detect and you've got to distinguish the difference between mere physical bread and, uh, listen, and, and, and drink. Listen, that this is the blood and the body of our Eucharist, the blood and the body of our communion. When Jesus taught this to the disciples, listen, in, in John 6, they said to him, this is a hard teaching. They said, we can't, listen, we don't know what you're talking about. We're not vampires. Listen, we're not consuming blood. We're not, get, listen, going along with this foolishness. You've got to say something different or we're all about to walk away. This is what the, the discussion was among them. When Jesus is teaching them in John 6 about, listen, the body and the blood, teaching them, and some of them walked away and did not follow him, the Bible says, anymore. Oh, glory to God. You better know that there are folk that still, listen, in uh, listen, various congregations today, listen, that have a problem believing that this, this Eucharist, this communion represents the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think it's interesting because, listen, the Lord didn't go after those that left him at this point. Uh huh, and apologized by discounting his words, but actually said and affirmed that this is my body. And he affirmed, this is my blood. I know you got a problem with it, but I need to not only, listen, take it back, but he said, I'm going to say it again, this is my body. 
Uh huh. Why are you walking away? Hey, it is my blood. Listen, you may not be able to receive it. You may not understand it, but you got to be reminded that, listen, when you receive the Eucharist, when you receive the communion, you remind yourself that God is present with me. Oh, glory to God. There's nothing more powerful to a believer than to know that I'm not walking through this corridor of my life without the presence of God. And the Lord said, every time, as often as you come together, he said, I want to make it, listen, open and make it clear to you that you can receive communion because God wants us to always, every time we come together, to know the Lord is present. Oh, glory to God. There is a belief, a doctrine that involves how Jesus is present, <coughs> and it is known as transubstantiation. Uh -huh. It is a belief, it's a doctrine that talks about how it is known then that the Lord is present, and it's called transubstantiation. Uh, this doctrine refers to the moment that the preacher blesses the bread and blesses the cup, and that is a precise moment, listen, that it physically becomes the Lord's body and the Lord's blood. Oh, glory to God. And he said, I want you to be reminded, uh, listen, that it is not just uh, my God. Uh, he talks about being uh, a wafer and wine, nor a cup and a cracker, but it, it becomes uh, through substan transubstantiation, uh, the blood and the body. It is a symbol, listen, of the Lord's presence in our midst, uh, and we're receiving his blood and his blood body. Oh, glory to God. And he said that his blood is sufficient. Because of his blood, my God, listen, healing comes in my body. Because of his blood, my God, everything the enemy endeavors to do in and through my life, my God, it is defeated by the power of the blood. Oh, glory to God. We've got to know that this is what the Lord desires desires uh, for each one of us. Uh, he wants us to recognize uh, that his blood is sufficient uh, and because his blood is here, uh, because his blood is present, uh, because the Lord is the Eucharist, uh, we've got to know that nothing that we need, uh, my God, is absent from this very moment. Uh, and that's why we get beyond ourselves uh, or just beside ourselves. Uh, oh, glory to God, because we recognize uh, no matter how difficult uh, circumstances may be at any point in our lives, uh, we still have something to glorify the Lord for uh, and declare nobody uh, can do us like God. That's what the Lord desires. Uh, there ought to be a great problem uh, with believing, uh, my God, in transubstantiation uh, because it's not found in the Word of God. Uh, listen, Jesus is present in the communion uh, because he said uh, that there was, uh, listen, so you cannot scripturally disprove uh, his presence, but you cannot tell how he's present uh, because he does not tell us uh, how he's present in the Word. Word. Uh, the reason we know that he's present in communion uh, is because he said that he was. Uh, he says, many of you know that he is present uh, right now because you sent him uh, even as you did. Uh, my God, in many other circumstances in your life, uh, doing praise and worship, uh, doing your moment of quiet time with the Lord, uh, you sensed a presence uh, that you knew was no one but God. And I want you to know that what you sense, uh, my God, when you're, listen, worshiping and glorifying God uh, is nothing more than God's presence uh, in your life. Uh, oh, glory to God. Uh, there's so many circumstances uh, within the worship experience uh, and we can do something physical. Uh, but my God, at the same time, uh, my God, you can do something spiritual uh, that happens such as lifting your hands. Uh, my God. God in giving God worship uh, as you sense the presence uh, of the Lord in your life. Uh, oh, glory to God. Uh, listen, you know that there are moments uh, when you've given God the glory uh, and you lifted the Lord uh, high in your spirit. Uh, my God, there is. Uh, my God, a sense of the Lord's presence. Uh, 
and you know when God is present in your life. Uh, my God, the, listen, the matriarchs and patriarchs of the church uh, reminded us when the Lord shows up, uh, he shows up to do business. Uh, my God, you may be overwhelmed uh, by some business transaction going on in your life, uh, but when the presence of the Lord shows up, uh, my God, the overwhelming uh, distress, uh, my God, is dissipated uh, because the presence of the Lord uh, is in, in, a, in your life uh, and upon your soul. Uh, my God, y'all remember the times uh, when you've gotten caught up in worship uh, and you never took the worries with you uh, into the throne room of God uh, because in the presence of the Lord, uh, you know that everything the Lord is uh, is right there with you. Oh, glory to God. When you listen aloud yourself uh, to slip into God's presence, uh, my God, the weight of the problem uh, is dissipated in your life. Uh, why is it so? Uh, I come to tell you the reason why the weight of your problem uh, listen, disappears and is dissipated uh, because the weight of God uh, has shown up in your life. Uh, no matter how unruly, uh, my God, the weight of that condition was. Uh, Y'all know how it was. Uh, this is when you used to wrestle uh, as an adult uh, with your little children. Uh, when they tried to struggle and wiggle their way out of them, uh, sometimes all you did uh, was just sit down on them uh, and they couldn't move uh, the muscle uh, because you put your weight uh, on theirs uh, and your weight greatly exceeded uh, their little weight. Uh, and I want you to know that's what our big God does every time you slip into worship, uh, he'll make that problem. Uh, my God seem like uh, it's always gone. Uh, listen, it doesn't trouble or bother you anymore uh, because the weight of God, uh, my God has shown up in your condition. Uh, the weight of God's glory uh, has shown up in your circumstance. Uh, the weight of God's glory uh, has shown up in your problem. Uh, the weight of God's glory glory uh, has shown up in your condition. Uh, the weight of God's glory uh, has shown up in your circumstance. Uh, nobody uh, can do us like God. Uh, I dare you shout, the Lord is uh, my Eucharist. Uh, the Lord is uh, my communion. Uh, tell God thank you. Uh, tell God yes. Uh, come on and celebrate God uh, and magnify him. Even right now, oh yes, Lord. Listen, I've got to close this thing. This is what the Lord declared. So many circumstances, listen, that we face. But when we listen, receive a lot of things within our Christian experience. Listen, by grace through faith, such as salvation, we receive salvation by faith through grace. Don't y'all know what the Lord said? It is by the grace of God that we can listen, apply our faith, and receive salvation. Let me tell you, it's by the grace of God uh, that you can apply your faith. Uh, my God, listen, and receive healing. Uh, it's by the grace of God uh, that you can apply listen, your faith uh, and receive the baptism uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Uh, somebody ought to shout, by grace uh, through faith. Uh, listen, whenever we apply faith, uh, that the blood of Jesus Christ uh, is sufficient for anything uh, and everything that we need. I dare you release your faith and know that by God's grace, I'm going to walk in the benefits that God has made available to my life. Give God glory and celebrate Him all over this place. This is what we do the physical act of communion. The Lord shows up and work in our lives. So listen, when you receive communion, I want you to be reminded that if God be for us, he's 
more than all the world that could ever be against us. I want you to be reminded that when you receive communion, I'm reminding myself that no weapon formed will ever prosper against me. When I receive communion, I'm reminding myself that yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. And I can and declare by the authority of the blood. Surely, I dare somebody shout, surely. Come on, shout, surely. God's goodness and his mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will, yes, I will. I will, yes, I will. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Oh, give God glory because you know you're going to stay in the Lord's house forever and forever. But in the Lord's house, my God, everything we need is always present. You may as well go ahead tonight and give God glory. You may as well go ahead tonight and give God praise. You may as well go ahead tonight and lift the name of the Lord. You may as well on social media, my God, pull over to the closest curve and lift those hands and celebrate God and give God the glory because you've come to understanding. You've been able to discern in your spirit that the Lord is with you. I dare you shout where you are and give God glory. I dare you praise him where you are and give God praise. I dare you celebrate God and magnify his name. I dare you shout where you are and lift him up in this place. Give God glory. Give God praise because he is my Eucharist. He is my communion. Come on, get ready to walk in your healing. Get ready to walk in peace. Get ready to walk through that closed door. Get ready to go back again and ask for another opinion. Get ready to go back again and ask for another resolution to the matter that's already been presented before you. I come tonight to cause you to step up in your faith and trust the God of the Bible. I told the saints last night. Don't let the reality of your situation stop you from imagining the power of the possibilities. You better see God because the Lord is with us. Oh yes he is. He's with you right now. And I come to tell you that God didn't come just to take sides. But God came to take over. Come on let God be sovereign in your life. Let God be ruler in your life. Give God the glory all over this place. He is our communion. He is our Eucharist. Nobody like the Lord. Listen, remember tonight that the Lord said that when I receive the Eucharist, when I receive communion, I'm reminding myself that the Lord is present. The Bible tells us clearly that communion is a symbol. And if I were preaching all of this message, I would tell you, number one, that communion is a symbol. Second, I would tell you that communion is more than a symbol. It is more than just a symbol in our life. And then I would want to close by encouraging you that, listen, communion imputes to us a responsibility. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith and living your lives as committed believers. Examine yourselves. He said, don't wait for the Lord to do it. He said, you do it. You examine yourself. That's what the text says in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. 
So do you not recognize this about yourselves by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you unless you indeed fail the test and are rejected as counterfeit? He says, examine yourselves and you won't, you won't need to be examined. He said, judge yourselves and you won't be judged. We all know the circumstances and situations in our lives that are present. And all we've got to do is give them to God. I had the privilege earlier today to witness uh, salvation to a Catholic individual. And I shared with her that when you know what the word of God says, the Lord has long ago given us the privilege of not having to go to confess our sins to an individual, but we confess our sins to God. He said, then the Lord will forgive you. The challenge with the Catholic Church is the fact that the, the, the priest is the only one that reads the Bible for the most part. Others are not that skilled or learned uh, in the, the word of God. And that's what the Bible says. In order to be saved, all you got to do is listen, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. Listen and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And he says you'll be saved. Listen, this is what the Lord desires. He says examine yourselves. Then he encouraged us to study the word of God that we might show ourselves approved unto God. We have responsibility in this partnership. I challenge you tonight to look at yourself and examine whether or not you are in the faith is what the word says. Faith, listen, uh, principles rest upon what the word of God says. He told us clearly in so many verses, particularly in John 14, 15, he said, if you love me, then do what I ask. Don't do what is uh, customary. He says, do what I ask. Don't do what's comfortable. He says, do what I ask. He says, don't do what is popular in the circles that you uh, matriculate in. He says, do what I've asked. How many of us are willing to do what the Lord wants us to do according to the word of God versus doing what is convenient and comfortable and perhaps even kosher to us because it's the easier thing to do? It's the thing that you can do that won't cause you to stick out, that won't cause you to rattle, uh, listen, uh, others' cages, that won't cause you to become this, uh, the, 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 the crawl and uh, a stick in someone else's crawl kind of thing. But you're someone that says, I'm going to do what the Lord says no matter what. Listen, this is your, your responsibility according to the word of God. Examine yourselves whether or not you're in the faith. So many churches don't believe in that standard. It just says, if you come together, listen, just receive communion. But the Lord says, examine yourselves whether you're in the faith. As our heads are bowed, eyes are closed, there's a person that's in this room that's on social media that may not know the Lord, but you know that it is essential for you to know him and you want to know him. I challenge you, listen, just to lean in a little bit closer Listen, on this, uh, the, the screen, the electronic device that you're watching us on and joining us on tonight. And I want you to say yes to God, to believe God, to trust him, to say, God, I want to know you more. I want to be like Paul. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection, the fellowship of your suffering. Lean in a little closer tonight. Let's say yes to him. Uh, listen, our response to you tonight is hallelujah. It's the highest praise. There's nothing greater that you can offer God but your life. As a newborn believer, do it tonight. Watch God, listen, be glorified. Watch heaven have a fit as you submit and say yes to God. Join together with me as we pray this prayer. Say, dear God, I confess tonight that I am a sinner, that I have done things unworthy of a child of God. I ask you tonight to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I pray tonight that God, you would hear and receive this prayer. I pray your word. In Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, I confess tonight the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and now I am saved. Thank you, Father, for coming into my life, making me whole, making me new, making me clean by the power of the blood. We believe it done. We thank you now that it's so, and I give you praise. In Jesus' name, and every believer say, thank God. Lord, I pray for every person tonight that's in this circle, those that may have come tonight, joined in this uh, season of celebration tonight, 
already uh, submitted to you as Savior and as Lord. Tonight, God, I pray that we walk away from this experience with a constant reminder in having it deeply ingrained and embedded in our hearts and in our minds that every time we receive communion, God, we're reminding ourselves of the sacrifice that you made for us at Calvary and that, God, you are still present with us right here, right now. And because you're present, God, we know that nothing that the enemy tries to do to destroy, to separate, to annihilate us, it will never be successful. We're excited and God, we give you glory and we declare victory belongs to us and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, and every believer say, thank God, amen, amen, amen. God bless you tonight. We thank God for you. Listen, we celebrate the Lord for those that may have given their hearts to the Lord uh, tonight. I pray that you would, listen, join us tonight in the celebration uh, of the power of a choice that you made tonight by putting your name and contact information in the chat. We want to get in touch with you to walk with you and partner with you uh, in the midst of this newfound, listen, decision that you made with the Lord, uh, for the Lord, that you desire uh, tonight to be saved. You've given your heart to him. And listen, I want you to know that this and this walk with the Lord doesn't start, listen, alone. But listen, already you solicited uh, the sort of uh, consolidation and cooperation from all of heaven. The Bible says there's rejoicing before the presence of the angels. When one sinner repents, you know that you've got to understand tonight that you have, listen, uh, have caused a ruckus to start in heaven. And guess what? There's excitement right here at New Bethel Church concerning the powerful choice you made tonight for God. And we celebrate the Lord for you. Listen, get in the chat, put your name, contact information there. We want to uh, connect with you to begin walking with you uh, in this new uh, again, choice and decision that you made. And we know that God, listen, wants to bless and prosper and push you forward uh, to the glory of God. I want to encourage you tonight, uh, listen, uh, to come join us uh, tomorrow morning. The Lord says the same uh, in our worship experience. Listen, before then, 9, 10 a.m., our Christian education hour, uh, we encourage you to be here. Again, I solicit parents to bring your children uh, and you be in place uh, tomorrow morning as well at 9, 10 uh, and then calls uh, your, your children to be here, to be in place. Thank God for the leadership and those that are teaching and leading the classes uh, in place early so that we can uh, be present, listen, when those uh, guests are here uh, to receive instruction in living a powerful and victorious life, uh, listen, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you to stay, listen, after the education hour, uh, and join us in our in-person worship experience at 10 o'clock a.m. It's going to be a time where the Lord, I know, has a word, and I believe God has a word expressly for you, and you don't want to miss that. Listen, come tomorrow and bring others with you that we can celebrate the Lord together. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Uh, as we prepare to close, I want to encourage us to let's sow tonight. Uh, I want to challenge you. The giving methods are on the screen if you want to give tonight, uh, listen, using Givelify, uh, then key into your Givelify app, New Bethel Church of God in Christ. You'll see various uh, uh, New Bethel churches uh, and addresses to appear. Uh, search for the address 1520 Little Rock Road. That is this location so that you can affirm and validate the destination of your gift that the Lord's put in your heart to sow tonight. Uh, if you are giving, uh, listen, and give the fire. Remember, keying in New Bethel Church of God in Christ in the Give the Fire app. Uh, also, you want to use Cash App. The, the cash tag is dollar sign NBCLT1520. Dollar sign NBCLT1520 uh, to give tonight. Thank God for you. If you want to use online giving, uh, the web address is www newbethelchurch.com you can search for e-giving and you can share your gift with us there we're excited about your presence uh, here tonight and we're excited that the Lord has already prompted in your spirit to start making preparations now to join us uh, tomorrow morning for our education hour and for our morning worship as we bow our heads tonight I want to uh, pray 
uh, over you as you endeavor to sow tonight. God, I thank you for this people. Thank you for their lavish, their generous hearts to sow. Thank you for those tonight that are being led by the Holy Ghost, Lord, to become tithers. And maybe in many, Lord, are tithing tonight for the very first time. But God, you're leading them and you're reminding them that you're present in their life and that you are, listen, uh, as a present help, that God, nothing uh, that the enemy endeavors to do against them. You eradicate the fear of sowing. You eradicate, listen, the, uh, the, the lack of understanding or anxiety that it comes with doing something new, something for the first time, because you're assuring them with your presence. God, thank you tonight for those that are pushing through uh, the challenges of of giving and trusting you now more incessantly in God more powerfully than ever before. Thank you that God, the, uh, the, the chains and the impediments of God of lack of decision making for you, God is being dissipated right now and God thank you that you are pouring into them and lifting their faith to trust you tonight as never before. Thank you for your word that said that if we give, it'll be given unto us good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto our bosom. God, we believe it, receive it, and by faith tonight, we declare it done. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints of God. We're excited that you joined tonight. Thank you for your uh, continued giving and your continued trust in and dependence upon and your reliance on the Lord, knowing that he that has begun a good work in you is able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God bless you tonight. Thank you for your liberal and your lavish giving, but more than anything, thank you tonight for your cheerful giving. We celebrate the Lord for you. Listen, don't forget tomorrow morning, 9, 10, Christian education, and at 10 o'clock, our morning worship. May God bless you. We look forward to seeing you there.